Welcome to Driver D Trains. Thanks for stopping by. I'm your host, Driver D. Our conductor and brakeman, Scratchy C, is busy building our train. In my last video, part two of this series, I showed you how to download and install the free DCC-EX command station software on your Arduino Mega microcontroller using the Arduino IDE, and then use the EX Web Throttle app in Google Chrome to run some trains. If you haven't already seen that video, be sure to check it out. In this video, part 3 of the series, I'll show you how to add a Wi-Fi shield to the command station. I'll also show you how to install the Y-Throttle app on your phone or tablet to run your trains. In the next video, I'll show you how to configure DCC-EX and connect the Wi-Fi shield to your home Wi-Fi network, as well as how to add an automation in DCC-EX to turn on your track power. After that, I'll show you how to add a digital LCD display to the command station. Be sure to check this video's description for links to the other videos in this series, as well as the various websites and products I mention here. Our train is ready, so let's notch up the throttle and get this freight rolling. Adding Wi-Fi to DCC-EX Now that we have assembled a basic DCC-EX command station and installed the DCC-EX software, let's add a Wi-Fi shield to the command station so we can use Wi-Fi throttles to control our locomotives. Here are the stops for today's manifest. First, we'll purchase a compatible Wi-Fi shield and some jumper cables. Then, we'll mount the Wi-Fi shield on the Arduino motor shield and connect it with jumper cables to the Arduino. After that, we'll download and install the Y-Throttle app on our phone or tablet. We'll use the EX Web Throttle app in Google Chrome to confirm the Wi-Fi shield's settings so we can connect our phone or tablet to the DCC EX command station and set up the Y-Throttle app and run some trains. The main line is clear, so let's get going. Step 1. Purchase the Wi-Fi shield and jumper wires. Now that we're ready to add Wi-Fi to our DCC-EX command station, we need to order the necessary parts. There are two items we'll need a Wi-Fi shield for the Arduino, and some breadboard jumper wires. I'll include links to these items in this video's description. Before we go on, there is one item I want to note about Wi-Fi shields and DCC-EX. Currently, in 2023, DCC-EX is fully compatible only with Wi-Fi shields running an older version of the Wi-Fi chip firmware from 2020. Unfortunately, this older firmware is no longer being used on new Wi-Fi shields in 2023. The newer version still works with DCC-EX, but in some cases your throttle might not connect and you will have to reboot the command station. It is possible that DCC-EX may be able to address this compatibility issues with newer firmware in a future update. It is also possible to downgrade the firmware on the Wi-Fi chip to the older version. However, that is a bit more detailed task and one that I'll cover in another video. Now, let's order some parts. For some reason, Wi-Fi shields for the Arduino don't seem to be that common, at least not on Amazon. So I recommend you go with DCC-EX's recommendation and purchase a MakerFab's Wi-Fi shield 
which is based on a popular Wi-Fi chip referred to as the ESP8266, made by a company called Espressif. You can order the MakerFabs Wi-Fi Shield directly from MakerFabs, and even though it has to ship internationally to the United States, the postage is minimal. I paid about $9 for the Wi-Fi Shield and $6 for registered airmail postage in early 2023, and the package arrived in about a week. I'll include a link to the MakerFabs website in this video's description. In addition to the Wi-Fi shield, you will also need some breadboard jumper wires with male and female ends in different configurations. You can find these on Amazon in various links. The 20 centimeter or 7.8 inch ones work well. I recommend you purchase a variety pack like these shown here. You'll only need two male to female wires for the Wi-Fi shield, but you will need some female to female ones for the LCD display we'll discuss in the next video. Again, I'll include a link in the description. Those are all the parts we'll need for now. Step 2. Mount the Wi-Fi shield on the Arduino motor shield. Now let's attach the Wi-Fi shield to the Arduino command station. The Wi-Fi shield sits on top of the motor shield and we attach it the exact same way we attach the motor shield to the Arduino. First, before we start, make sure you unplug the USB cable and all the power leads from the Arduino and motor shield. Now, get the Wi-Fi shield and look at the top of the board to identify all the pin names along the edges where the header sockets are located. You will want to make sure that these line up with the same pins on the motor shield. As when we did this before, line up the pins and set them gently in the sockets on top of the motor shield. Sight down the board on both sides to make sure everything is lined up. Then gently press the pins into the sockets a little at a time, going back and forth on each side to make sure the board is going down level and evenly on both sides. Check the pin names again to make sure everything is lined up properly. Then press the pins firmly all the way into the sockets. The Wi-Fi shield is now installed. Now look at the top of the Wi-Fi shield and find the eight banks or groups of three pins in banks numbered from 0 to 7. The pins in the top and bottom rows are the data transmit and receive pins for the Espressive 8266 Wi-Fi chip at the heart of the Wi-Fi shield. Look at these pins and you should see a pair of black plastic jumpers straddling a couple of these pins, connecting them to the middle row. The middle row of pins connects through the header sockets to some of the digital circuits in the Arduino that we will not be using for the Wi-Fi shield. So you need to remove the two jumpers. You should be able to remove them easily with your fingers or a pair of tweezers. Just lift them straight up off the pins. You could throw them away, but I suggest hanging them off to the side of a couple of the pins as I've done here in case we need them again in the future. Just make sure only one side of each jumper is on a pin and they'll be harmless. Now we need to connect a pair of jumper wires from the transmit and receive pins on the Wi-Fi shield to the transmit and receive pin sockets we will be using on the Arduino. These are pin sockets number 18, transmit, and 19, receive, on the Arduino Mega. We will need two jumper wires with female socket connectors on one end to connect to the pins on the Wi-Fi shield, and male pin connectors on the other end to connect to the sockets on the Arduino. If you bought a package of wires similar to the ones I suggested, Find the ribbon cable with the male connectors on one end and the female connector on the other. Carefully peel a pair of wires off the ribbon cable. Take the male ends of the wires and carefully insert the pins into sockets 18 and 19 on the Arduino. Make sure the pins are seated all the way in the sockets. Make a note of which color wire is in the number 18 transmit socket and which is in the 19 receive socket. 
In this example, we have a brown wire in number 18 and a red wire in number 19. We will swap these on the Wi-Fi shield so that the data transmitted from the Wi-Fi shield is received by the Arduino and the commands transmitted by the Arduino are received by the Wi-Fi shield. So take the female end of the wire you placed in the number 19 receive socket on the Arduino, in this example the red wire, and place that wire's female socket on one of the transmit pins on the Wi-Fi shield. The transmit pins are in the row closest to the header socket on the edge of the board, and they are all connected together so it doesn't matter which one you use, but I chose the pin in bank zero for convenience. Now take the wire you placed in the number 18 transmit socket on the Arduino, in this case the brown wire, and place that wire's female socket on one of the receive pins on the Wi-Fi shield. Again, I chose the bank zero pin. After you connect the wires, take one more look to make sure that the wire from the number 18 transmit socket on the Arduino is connected to one of the receive pins on the Wi-Fi shield, and the wire from the number 19 receive socket is connected to one of the transmit pins. After you've confirmed that everything is connected correctly, you can tuck any extra wire under the motor shield, as shown here, to keep everything tidy. Now, when you plug your USB cable into the Arduino, you should see a blue LED flash next to the Espressif Wi-Fi chip on the Wi-Fi shield. We are done with our hardware setup. Now let's work on the software. Step 3. Download the Y-Throttle app on our phone or tablet. Before we do anything with the DCC EX software on our command station, let's download the Throttle app we'll use to control our trains. That way we won't have to do it later. For this demonstration, I will use the Y-Throttle app, which is available on the Apple iOS App Store for the iPhone and iPad. If you have an Android phone or tablet, you will want to use the Engine Driver app. Unfortunately, I won't be able to show you Engine Driver in this video. The Y-Throttle app is available from the Apple iOS App Store. There are two versions, the full version, which costs $10 and a free light version. For now, we'll just start with the free light version. You can upgrade to the full version later, after you've had a chance to try it out. Go ahead and download the app, but don't open it just yet. Step 4. Read the settings from the Wi-Fi shield. There are two different ways we can access the command station with our throttles using the Wi-Fi shield depending on how we configure DCC-EX. The most basic and default method is to connect our throttle directly to the command station by selecting it in the Wi-Fi menu of our phone or tablet using the DCC-EX default password. This is called Access Point Mode, or AP Mode for short. The other method is to instruct the Wi-Fi shield to connect to our local home network using our own home Wi-Fi name and password. Then we can access the command station anytime we are connected to our home network. This is called station mode. We will start by connecting our phone or tablet directly to the DCC EX command station in the default access point mode and then run some trains to test it out. So let's get started. Connecting in access point mode. First, let's confirm the Wi-Fi shield is working properly and obtain its address and password using the EX Web Throttle app we used in the last video. Remember, we need to use Google Chrome for the EX Web Throttle app. Plug your DCC EX command station into your computer using the USB cable and wait a few moments for the command station to boot. Also, plug in all the leads for the track power. Then open the EX Web Throttle app in Google Chrome. I'll include a link in this video's description in case you've misplaced it. 
We need to make sure that the slider for the debug console is turned on. Then we press the Connect DCC++ EX button in the upper right corner of the throttle. Select the USB port that our command station is connected to and click Connect. The EX Web Throttle app will connect to the command station and we will see a transcript of the information being sent to and received from DCC EX as the command station boots. There will be some brief pauses, but eventually we will see a couple of lines near the bottom of the console window that say LCD3 Ready and LCD2 Power Off. Note that by default, DCC EX will report this information for the LCD display even if you don't have an LCD display connected to your command station. We now need to copy down some of this information. Let's scroll up a little bit in the console window. You can do this using the scroll bar on the right side of the window, the arrow keys on your keyboard, or the scroll wheel on your mouse if you have one. If we scroll up about five or six lines from the bottom, the exact number will vary. We should see a line that says LCD5 port equals 2560. This could be split across more than one line of text in the window. This is the address of the port that our throttle will use to talk to DCC EX once we connect our throttle to the command station. It will almost certainly be 2560. Jot down the number just to be sure. Next we scroll up about three more lines until we see a line that says LCD4 which will most likely be followed by the numbers 192.168.4.1. This four-part number is known as an Internet Protocol, or IP, address. IP addresses are used by devices that connect to the Internet, as well as most devices on private networks, such as the Wi-Fi shield on our DCC EX command station. Again, write down the numbers, as we will need to enter them in our Throttle app later. Now let's clear the console log using the button on the right. Then, in the console's command line box, we will type the following command, all in capital letters, plus CWSAP question mark. Then press return or enter, or hit the send button. This command tells the Wi-Fi chip to send its access point network identification and password. These are created by DCCEX when the command station boots. The default value for the DCCEX network ID in access point mode is DCCEX underscore followed by six letters or numbers. And the default password is PASS underscore followed by the same six letters or numbers, where the last six characters are from the Wi Fi Shield's unique hardware address. Note that the words DCCEX and PASS are all in uppercase while the six characters at the end are a combination of lowercase letters and numbers. Again, let's jot these down. If for some reason you have any trouble finding these items, press the Disconnect DCC++ EX button, clear the log, then reconnect and try again. We now have the information we need to connect our Y Throttle app to our DCC EX command station and run some trains. Step 5 Connect the Y Throttle app to DCC EX. Now let's connect our Y Throttle app to DCC EX. First, we need to connect our phone or tablet's Wi Fi to the command station Wi Fi which, as you may recall, is running in the default access point mode. Open the Wi-Fi settings menu in your phone or tablet and look for and select the network with the ID you copied earlier called DCCEX underscore followed by the six letters or numbers you saw earlier. Then enter the password you copied down. Remember, it is uppercase PASS underscore followed by the same six letters or numbers. Remember, the last six characters of your access point network ID and password will be different from the ones shown here. Your phone or tablet should now be connected to the DCC EX Wi-Fi. 
Since you are no longer connected to your regular home network, you may get a message that you cannot connect to the internet over the Wi-Fi connection. This is normal and you can ignore it, but make sure your phone or tablet does not disconnect you from DCCEX as a result. Check your phone or tablet's Wi-Fi settings if you're unsure. Before we launch our throttle app, let's get one of our DCC locomotives and place it on the main track. And because the free light version of the Y throttle app does not include a switch for track power, we need to turn on the track power using the slider in the EX Web Throttle app in Google Chrome. We'll address this limitation later. Now that's done, we can finally open the throttle app we downloaded earlier. Again, I will be using the Y Throttle Lite iOS app for this demonstration. After we launch the Y Throttle app, we will need to manually enter the IP address and port number for the DCC EX Wi Fi server that we copied down earlier. If the app does not automatically open with the Select Server screen, Press the Settings button in the bottom right corner of the window, then the Server Configuration button, then whatever blue text is listed under Current Server. Now on the Select Server screen, click Configure, then enter the four-part IP address in the four boxes at the top, and the port number in the box next to the word port below. Then press connect. If successful, we should see a message that we are connected, although in some cases this may not appear. Now we'll click the address button at the bottom of the screen, not the one in the menu at the top. This will let us set the DCC address for our locomotive. Select keypad near the top if it is not already highlighted, and then type in the DCC address for your locomotive using the number pad. The DCC address for this Southern Pacific GP40 is its road number, 7623. After you've entered the DCC address for your locomotive, the set button in the upper right corner of the screen should light up. Click set and the indicator in the upper left corner of the screen should change from a red not set to green, showing the DCC address you just entered. If for some reason the set button does not light up after you enter the DCC address, go back to your phone or tablet's Wi-Fi menu and make sure that it is still connected to the DCC EX command station and hasn't reverted to your regular home Wi-Fi network. Let's also double check again to make sure that the track power is on. Now, in the Y Throttle app, we select the throttle button at the bottom left corner of the window. Try turning on the headlight. If your locomotive has sound, try pressing F1 for the bell, or F2 or F3 to honk the horn. When we are ready, advance the throttle and our locomotive will roll out. All aboard! Step 6. Run some trains. We are now using our phone or tablet as a Wi-Fi throttle to control our trains using DCCEX. Let's see what else we can do. If we like, we can change the layout of the throttle by clicking on the settings button at the bottom and then selecting throttle. On the D-Saver, I like to use the yard style throttle with directional arrows instead of forward or reverse. You can also change whether the throttle speed slider is on the left or the right. There is also a dual throttle setup available for controlling two locomotives in the full version of the Y Throttle app. If the throttle ever seems to get stuck, won't connect to the command station, or your locomotives don't act the way they should, my favorite example is when the horn sounds and won't stop, unplug the USB from your command station 
and close the throttle app or force quit if necessary. Then reboot the command station, turn on the track power, and reconnect the throttle. Now let's run some trains. What's next? Configure DCC EX Wi Fi for station mode. In the next video, I'll show you how to configure the DCC EX software to connect the command station to your own home Wi Fi network in station mode. After that, I'll show you how to install and configure an LCD display for your DCC EX command station. And all that is for another day. Until then, thanks for watching. Well, Scratchy, are all the cars blocked to your satisfaction? Well, then, what are we waiting for? All aboard!